Hello everyone, Jay Marks here, working with the Cross Timbers Gazette, interviewing local notable people, politicians, and community players. And today, we've got Ben Bubgarner. Ben, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, sir? Good. He's our state House District 63 representative, and we're in the Caddo Building. Ben, weren't you on town council when this was approved? I sure was. And this is where your headquarters is? Absolutely. Good. Why don't we take advantage of it and have a conversation about why people should re-elect Ben Bumgarner? Great. Let's go, Jay. All right. Ben, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Jay. You bet. This is going to be a lot of fun. You know, Max Miller of the Cross Timbers Gazette has asked me to go meet all the candidates. So here I go. Um, tell us about you. I mean, I know a lot about you, but let's pretend like our folks don't. Sure. Well, you know, I'm from Flower Mound, Texas. I've lived here for the last seven, 10 years, and I have my family here. My daughter, Cecilia, she's at Flower Mound High School. Mindy and I, we, we, when we got married, Back in 14, we wanted to really sit down and find a place that was family oriented. And what better place than Flower Mound? Lived here for a few years, got politically active, and I ran for town council back in 19. As everybody knows, I served us locally. And then when uh, Jay Nelson decided to retire, and uh, well, I shouldn't say retire, move on to bigger and better things because he's our Secretary of State now. Yeah. Tam Parker moved up, moved on to Senator, and people really asked me and wanted me to run for, for State Representative, and I put my name in the hat and was in a four-man race, and here I am, I'm your guy. Right, yep. and, you're, and you're serving State House Representative, no, State Representative House District 63. Yes, sir. Which is part of Flyer Mound, Trophy Club, Roanoke, part Carrollton. of Louisville, Carrollton. Yep. Okay, so you have a big area. Yeah, not as big as many. I mean, if you look at the West Texas reps in all of West Texas, from the Panhandle down to Brownsville, there's 13 reps. Here in uh, Denton County, we have five. We call them the, the D5 because we work very closely together to make sure that we get things done for our constituents here in the county. Very good. <clears throat> you know, I mean, working um, as a member of town council and now working as a member of the Texas House, yep. big difference. Yeah, because uh, now instead of having to appease three other members on, on the board to get things done, I got to make sure I get the majority of uh, 75 done to get whatever bill or piece of legislation I want to get across the finish line. And then I got to make some people in the Senate happy to get it to the governor's desk. So, yeah, just a little bit more. And, you know, I spent a lot of time this last session building relationships in the House. Right. You have to. That's right. the only way to get legislation done. And, you know, we can sit there and learn the rules, which I did that as well. But the rule book is about this tall. And you can spend your first 60 days learning the rules, which you do have to learn a little bit. But the most important thing is, is making the relationships. Right. And that, it's pretty obvious you've done. Yesterday, <clears throat> you had a rally in Roanoke at 1 p.m., middle of the work day. How many people were you thinking was going to show up? I would have felt blessed if 50 people would have showed up, and there was close to 650 people there. Yeah, it was on television, on the news, yep. and Governor Abbott was there endorsing you as well. Absolutely, and it's been the greatest honor to have the, to work with the governor. He's been very strong on the border issue, and it's very passionate of mine. And the number one issue that I ran on when I wanted to run for the seat was our property taxes. And right. on town council, that was one of my biggest issues there. I wanted to save us money locally. and. In the three years that I worked on the town council at the time, we had the historically lowest tax rate in, in the history of our town. And now I get to go and fight for that in Austin and we're going to keep working. Good. And how's that going? It's going well. Good. And, you know, just this, this freshman class that came in, just, just having some continuity with them. And there's three of us here in Denton County, they're freshmen and we all have the same common goal. I mean, we listen to our constituents. The biggest thing is, Hey, property taxes are killing us here. And now it's the border issue. And well, they work hand in hand because you have all, all, all the migration coming through it, the invasion that's happening in our state. Right. It's sucking our resources. It's, it's causing our, our taxes to go up. And so uh, we, we got to do what we can to, to slow that down and, and get back on course so we can actually save money here at home. So you have a lot of work to do in Austin. Absolutely. Very good. Tell me, what is something that you're really proud of that you participated in as a representative? The fight every day. The one, <clears throat> my biggest bill that I got across the finish line was a human trafficking bill. And I didn't have any any problems getting my bill through, but uh, there was another rep, a, a local rep, uh, Kronda Timish. She had a similar bill, and my bill was was a companion bill to hers that gave our bills more teeth, and it was dying in the Senate. So I pulled my bill back with Senator Tam Parker and Senator Phil King. I said, guys, can we pull this back? And Senator Parker added an amendment, which was most of the meat and the girth of, of Corona's bill, Senator or, uh, Representative Timish's bill, onto my bill. We amended it, it came back to the House, and I was very nervous when it came back to the House because 
I didn't think it was going to have a muster chance of passing back through. Right, because a lot of them don't. Exactly, because it was not germane, and it was it was two totally different bills stacked on top of each other. But because of the relationships I built, we got the two bills stacked together, and we got it back across the finish line in the Senate. And we made a very strong bill for human trafficking in the state. And it's already been in place since September, and it's actually working to this day. That's so good. Yes. And, you know, and that's a horrible, horrible thing. It is. So I'm, I'm really, thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Ben, I have a question. Um, do you have uh, an experience as a representative where one of the voters or constituents here in the area called you about a problem? And, and what did you do to fix it? Oh, gosh, I got tons of stories. And one that comes to mind is, the most, is a recent one where I was block walking. And I was, I was knocking on the door of a constituent here in Flower Mound. And as I was, and as I was leaving, I had a very strong, pungent odor, a natural gas that just hit my face. And I was like, Oh my gosh, what, where's that coming from? And you know, you don't ever know where it's coming from, but it was something that kind of knocked me and my wife down. It really, really affected us. So I called the, the, uh, fire chief and, uh, and the, and the city manager here or the town manager in Flower Mound and said, Hey, just want you to know I was at this address and there's a strong order of natural gas. Guys might need to come take a look at it. And then I talked to the homeowner later on that evening. They made a request, I guess, 60 days ago and, and the atmosphere came out and they said there was no issue. Well, the fire department came out and did a test and it was a leak. And they actually had somebody there from, from the, from Atmos there within 10 days to get it squared away where they've been waiting for 60 days and who knows how long the gas has been leaking for. So, and they never told me about it. No one told me it was just something that I came across. And so I helped them with that. And then, you know, I get people calling me about passport issues all the time. Well, that's a federal issue, but I can tell you right now, I have a great relationship with, with Dr. Burgess's office that if you call me with a passport issue, I hand you off with them. And they get you taken care of. And I, let me tell you, I get people that call me two days before a trip saying, Hey, I need my passport. Has it come in yet? I'm like, well, that two days, I don't know if I can do anything about that or if they can help you with that, but I'm sure it's not going to try. And we used to knock it out for them. So that's interesting. So here you are. You're a state representative. You're not in Congress in, D in DC. You're mm -hmm. not on town council, but you use your relationship still to help us. That's right. Out. It's all about relationships. I, I agree with you because I'm in relationship business as well. So, um, Ben, tell me something. What is something that has surprised you as an individual serving in this capacity? How well that everybody in that building works together to get things done to better this state. Texas is so big and people forget about that. I mean, you know, serving on the council in Flower Mound, living in Flower Mound, we live in this, in this, I like to call it our bubble. It's, it's this land of perfection. Perfectionist, and we, we just love it here. But you know, outside, it's like everybody has their own different little uni unique issue, their own little niche. What, what's going on? So, what's happening in Flower Mound isn't per se happening in Roanoke, isn't per se happening out in Big Spring, isn't happen happening in Laredo, Texas. So, I remember my first day when I was on the House floor, I walked up to uh, a, a, a Democrat uh, uh, representative from South Texas and I said, you're going to hate me this session because I'm going to do what I can to fight for property taxes. And he looked at me and I and he goes, son, I don't know why I would hate you. I hate, I hate where our property taxes are going to. I want to work with you to make sure our property taxes are lowered. And it just took me off guard because I wasn't really expecting that. I thought it was going to be this big, long out, drawn out fight. And no, no, nobody wants to see where our tax rates going. And that's the reason why you put me in office. And that's the reason what we're, we're going to fight about. And everybody has that same common theme these days. So. That's awesome. Ben, why should people vote for you again? People should vote for me again because I have the experience. I'm the only candidate in this race that knows how town municipalities work. I understand how government itself works. This last year has been a big learning curve in just building relationships, learning the house, building the quorum, and just learning the ins and outs on, on how lawmaking really works. And you need somebody now in these trying times. We can't afford to take a step back and have someone learn. We have the border issue going on. We have property taxes that are they're the biggest issue. We have other numerous issues with infrastructure in this area. You need someone that's that has a little bit of experience with those things. I've been a fighter on these things. I've been I've been a champion on these issues, and I'm going to continue to be a champion on these issues. That's why you should vote for me. Very good. Ben, thank you so much. Everyone, go to votebumgarner.com to learn more. And his phone number's there, too. Give him a That's call. Right. He's a great guy. Ben, thank you. Appreciate you, Jay.